starting a new series called Connected. But before we talk about our new series, we gotta talk about something else. Camp! That's right! One and All Kids Camp is coming this summer. And if you are currently in second grade, third grade, fourth grade, or fifth grade right now, then you can come to summer camp. Check out this video from last year.
Talk to your parents about signing up today. Talk to your leaders about more info. Camp's gonna be awesome. Getting back to our Connected series, it's all about peace. It's all about putting others before our desire to win or to be right. I'm not really connected right now. Oh. I gotta, I gotta figure this out. I don't know, I'm connected. I know. But our memory verse is from Romans 12, 18, which says, if it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. This verse can really help us to remember how we should act in the world. This week, we're beginning our series by looking at how we can make peace wherever we go. So, let's learn. Hey kids, it's Chris, campus pastor from One and All Upland, here with my brother, Pastor Michael from San Dimas. And we're ready for some games. We hope you are too. We got some jelly beans here. We got some sticks. Tyler, what are we playing today? All right, guys. Welcome to One and All Kids. We're excited to have you guys playing these games with us. You are going to be playing our jelly bean game. So you each grab a popsicle stick. Jelly bean! Right. You put the edge of it in your mouth. You can hold it with your teeth. You can hold it with your lips, your choice. Mm -hmm. You are going to be placing jelly beans on said popsicle stick. The first person to get mm. six balance on the popsicle stick All right. will be our winner. Why? Now, Why? For fun. Oh. Yeah, this is all for fun. Mm. Fun and games. Now, mm. kids, you guys are going to be playing this in your rooms as well. So, leaders, you can set up kids with this game. You're going to be playing along with Pastor Michael, mm. Pastor Chris. So, you guys are able to grab the jelly beans one at a time with your hands, set them on this popsicle stick in your mouth. If they drop mm -hmm. and you still have some on there, don't worry about the ones that drop. Just okay. keep getting first person to get six. Wins the game. All right. All right, are you guys ready? Ready. All right, kids, are you ready? All right, here we go. I'm going to count you in. Three, two, one, go. Just for reference, we have not tested this game, so we don't actually know if it's possible, but we're going to see if they can prove if it's possible or not. The concentration from Pastor Chris Ricks is unparalleled. Eyes closed. Pure focus. We're down to the wire. And Pastor Chris is the winner! Congratulations! <laughs> Wow, that was fun. That, that was, was insane. That was, that was crazy. Because I was laughing. Good job. Laughing in the Good job. Thank room. you, brother. Hey, we hope you guys have fun playing this hold game. On. And if you hold see on. us on campus, come say hello. Drop some jelly beans on our head. We'll have some fun. <laughs> All right, guys. Have a good rest of service. Hey everyone, I'm Pastor Tyler, and we are kicking off Easter month with a new series. It's called Connected, and we are learning about peace. Peace is showing that you care about others more than you care about winning or being right. We know that Jesus is the ultimate peacemaker, and his example is the best one to follow. We also know that we can read and learn from God's word on how to be more like him each and every day. Our bottom line this week is make peace whenever you can. Not when you like it, but whenever you can. I don't know about you, but this one's hard for me because I like winning. I like being the best. I like to use my talents and skills to be at the top of whatever I'm doing. But God tells us to make peace whenever we can, all the time. Now, that's hard to do even if you're not like me and you don't care that much about winning. That's simply because of people. We know that God created everyone and that we should act like Jesus towards all people, but we also know that there are just some people we feel more connected to than other people. The ones we aren't connected with as much are the hardest to make peace with. It's the easiest to break the connections with those people. But in Romans 12, verse 18, the Apostle Paul writes that we should be peacemakers. 
So let's flip there to see what it says. Romans is in the New Testament, which you might think old and new are like perfectly split halfway, but that's not the case. Romans is a little bit past the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, then comes Acts. I went too far. Then comes Romans. So Romans chapter 12. I'm going to move my handy dandy little ribbon there so I don't lose my spot. Verse 18. All right, here's what it says. It says, if it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. That's a big deal. He wrote this as a letter to the Roman people at the time, but it still applies to us today. Back then, there were groups of people that just didn't get along. Jews and Gentiles, rich and poor, healthy and sick, you name it. But everyone can come together because of Jesus. So what is peace and how do we make peace with everyone? Sometimes we think peace is just quiet or calm. After a long day, you might say, I just need some peace and quiet. Peace might be a sign of friendship, like a peace offering. Maybe it's that someone is okay with their circumstance, making peace with the world around them. Regardless of how you define it, peace is about connection. It's when our relationships are the way they're supposed to be, the way God intended them to be. Peace is found when we care about other people rather than finding fault and making them the other side. So I have someone here who's gonna tell us what this looks like. So let's go hear from them. So my daughter Chloe was on the playground one day and her two friends who she thought were best friends were being mean to her. And you see, Chloe is a girl who just loves with her whole heart. And that hurt her so much that her friends were being mean to her. They were telling her mean things like, we're not friends anymore, we don't wanna play with you. And when I picked up Chloe from school that day, I didn't realize that her whole day was ruined just because of that moment. And so when I talked to her at home, I found out what had happened. And for Chloe, that was just an enormous thing to her. And you see, Chloe, being the loving girl that she is, just took it so uh, hurtful that her friends, her best friends, would do that to her. And in talking with her, getting her to understand that maybe her friends were having a bad day, maybe her friends, you know, weren't really communicating the right words to her. Talking to Chloe about giving them forgiveness and teaching her that everybody deserves a second chance, everybody deserves uh, forgiveness, was kind of a new concept to her. She didn't realize that people needed second chances. And so as Chloe went to school the next day, she went to her friends and kind of went over how she felt. She told them, hey, it was not nice that you guys told me you didn't want to play with me, that you weren't friends with me. And since then, her and her friends have been able to talk and communicate a lot better with each other. Now she comes home happy, tells me all the things that they get to do on the playground with her friends. So we gotta remember, as you're out and about with your friends at school, at baseball practice, at any of the things that you do where you have your friends, we gotta remember that sometimes we're gonna say things that aren't correct or not right or hurtful, but let's make sure that we give people a second chance. We give them an opportunity to maybe explain what's going on. So as you're talking with your friends, Make sure you always give them the benefit of the doubt. Make sure you're talking to them about your feelings and how it made you feel in whatever situation came up. So just remember, always try to make peace wherever you can. Thanks, guys. Paul wrote for us to make peace if it's possible. That means that sometimes it's not possible. But as believers, not having peace shouldn't be our fault. We need to do everything within our power to make peace with those around us. In a moment where someone does something to disrupt the peace and the connection between us, it's really easy to lash out and say something we regret or do something we regret, but this is something we can work on to be peacemakers like Jesus. When you start to care more about the other person, searching to find common ground, seeking to understand where they're coming from, it will change the whole situation. So, when the tension rises in your life, ask yourself, What's possible right now for me to do? How can I help make the peace? As you begin to make peace over and over again, you'll find that you are making the world around you more and more like Jesus. And that's exactly what he hopes for. Let's pray. Jesus, thank you again for just being the best example of, of how we should be. 
Uh, when it comes to peace, I pray that each of us can not seek out conflict, but we can seek to find common ground uh, in you between us and everyone. I pray that we could be the best peacemakers that the world has ever seen so that we can change the world around us to be less about fighting and more about coming to know who you are. We love you and we thank you for, for all that you do for us and the peace that you give us. And it's in your name we pray, amen. Making peace can be hard, but it's what Jesus would do. Since Jesus is the ultimate example of peacemaking, we should all be trying to do what he did all the time. I'm thankful that Jesus gave us this example because even though I have a hard time giving up the wins, I know that it can bring the peace of Jesus, which is a better thing. Peace is always a win, and everyone is better for it. One way that we can say thank you to Jesus for being the ultimate peacemaker and showing our love for God and others is by giving our offering. In the Bible, God asks us to give offering back to Him so that He can do some amazing things with it all around the world. But He also asks us to give our offering for other good reasons too. God wants us to give our offering so we know that He is the most important thing, even more important than the money or stuff that we might have. God doesn't ask for a lot. He asks for 10%. That means if we have $10, God wants us to give $1 back to Him, that first dollar. When we give our offering at church, that money goes to helping others in need in communities all over the world so that they can hopefully hear about Jesus just like you do. Talk to your parents about what it means to give your offering today. Now it's time to move on to service. Whether you're worshiping or hanging out with your community group, let's grow together. Someone who makes me dance He's the reason my feet are moving He's the reason I'm gonna lift my hands and clap Clap, clap to the sound Jump, yeah. jump up and down Spin, spin, spin all around I'm singing it This is the very best friend, the very best
that you joined us. Next week's service is going to be awesome too. So don't forget, bring some friends as we learn more and more about following Jesus. Until then, we want to send you out into the week with one hope, one life, in, in Christ. Christ. Got to find an outlet for this. Got to get yeah. connected, you know? I mean, mine has a battery. It's like wireless connection. Don't even need to be connected. It's not even fair. That's cheating. <laughs>